What is up, people? I want to talk about this problem that I actually first thought about a really long time ago, and it comes from a real life situation I was encountering. I used to drive this really old car, and the Bluetooth was broken, so I couldn't play any music from my phone, so I had to just rely on the radio and whatever songs were playing on there. Now, there was basically just two stations on the car radio that I really cared to listen to. But of course, the problem with radio stations is sometimes they're playing songs, but annoyingly, sometimes they're playing advertisements, which I really don't care to listen to. So the question I had was, if I just randomly tuned in, what was the probability that at least one of these two radio stations was playing a song? And so we're going to try to answer that question today, and we're going to have some assumptions about what the times of songs versus ads and what the transition probabilities, modeling all this as a Markov chain as well, are going to be between songs and ads. And I just thought like framing this problem this way, thinking about it, incorporated a lot of different aspects of data science and statistics. And it was kind of a fun problem to work through that also did have this connection to my real life. So hopefully you think so too. So we're going to make a couple assumptions. We're going to say that the length of a song when it plays is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda equals one third. Now you don't need to remember everything about the exponential distribution, but the main thing we need to know in this video is that the mean of an exponential distribution is one divided by this lambda. So that means that the average length of a song is about three minutes. That seems kind of reasonable. And here the average length of an ad is about two minutes, which also seems reasonable. Now we need one more piece of data if we're trying to solve this problem, and that's going to be the transition probabilities between songs and ads. In other words, if a song is playing, what's the probability that the next thing that plays is also a song versus it's an ad? And same question if an ad is playing. And so we're going to assume these numbers here. Of course, all these numbers can change. The problem solving methodology will stay the same. So we're going to say if there's a song playing, there's a 40% chance an ad plays next and a 60% chance that a song plays next. Those two numbers, of course, need to add up to 100% because that's the only two states in our world right now. If an ad is playing, we're saying there's a 70% chance the next thing that plays is a song and a 30% chance the next thing that plays is an ad. And the question, as we stated before, is using all this information, using all this data, if I were to tune in at a random time, so I just enter my car and turn the radio on, what is the probability that at least one station out of these two stations is currently playing a song? Now, I encourage you to pause the video or even come back to this video later, having thought about this yourself. I think it's a really cool exercise in how do I take all these fundamentals of statistics that I know and use them to attack this problem. But assuming you've done that, let's get into the problem solution. So we're going to start at kind of a high level and we're going to say, what are we after? We're after the probability that at least one station is playing a song. Well, what's the opposite of that event? The opposite of that event would be the probability that neither station is playing a song. And in terms of probability, opposites are the same as doing one minus. So we're after one minus the probability that neither station is currently playing a song. Now we made a implicit independence assumption between the two stations, which means that whatever one station is doing doesn't affect the other station. I think it's a pretty safe bet. There may be some correlation between when stations choose to play ads versus songs in the real world, but in our simplified world, we can say they're independent, which means the probability that neither station is playing a song would be the probability that station one is not playing a song times the probability that station two is not playing a song. But because we haven't assumed anything special about one station or the other, they both follow these rules that we just talked about. This is equal to one minus the probability that either station, station one or station two, is playing an ad. And so we square that because that's encompassing these two probabilities multiplied together. We're just giving them a single name here. All that is to say, if we're after the question we're trying to answer, which is the probability at least one station is playing a song, it is enough for us to solve what is the probability that any station is playing an ad at any given moment, which is a simpler problem to solve. So now, how would we start solving that problem? So I reproduce that above. What's the probability that a given station is playing an advertisement at any given moment. So we think about this for a second, we think about it for a second, and we might go down the path of, there's like two components going on here. There's this Markov chain, which has to do with events happening one after another and after another, but each of those events is not equal. 
they're not all like two minutes long or three minutes long. That would make this problem a lot easier. Those events can also have variable times. So what if we just deal with the first part first? What is the fraction of events, and here I'm using the word event to mean either a song or an advertisement. In the long run, what are the fraction of events that are songs and what are the fraction of events that are advertisements? This doesn't fully get us to our solution because we still need to take into account the difference in length and the distribution of length of a song versus an advertisement, which are exponentially distributed, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So dealing with just a Markov chain point for a second, we can draw the transition matrix, which is the primary mathematical structure which defines a Markov chain. And a transition matrix basically just encodes our little picture of a Markov chain as a matrix of probabilities of transitioning from any state, so from on the rows, to any state, so two on the columns. So for example, there's a 60% chance that if I'm at a song, the next thing I play would be a song. So same information in the picture as in this table or matrix. Now, if we want to answer the question, in the long run, what are the fraction of events that are going to be songs versus advertisements? Then we know from Markov chains, we can get that long run behavior by finding the stationary distribution or the steady state of this Markov chain. And in our original Markov chains video, which is going to be linked below, we find that we can get that steady state by finding the left eigenvectors of this transition matrix which means what is some vector pi? So pi is a vector of two elements. What is some vector pi I can left multiply by my transition matrix T so that I get pi back? And that's a stationary distribution because it's saying if the Markov chain is at this distribution pi, then if I apply the transition matrix to it, I remain at the distribution pi, which means if I were to apply the transition matrix again, I'm gonna just stay at that distribution. What is that pi? Well, we have a pretty small example here, so it's pretty easy to work through these eigenvector equations. We're going to get two equations, and if we solve these equations, we're going to get pi 1 is equal to 0.64, and pi 2 is equal to 0.36. Remember, these two things need to add up to 100%, because they represent the probability that we're going to be at either state of the Markov chain. What this is saying in human terms is that 64% of the events in the long run are going to be songs, and 36% of the events in the long run are going to be advertisements. Do those numbers just kind of generally in a fuzzy sense make sense? Well, yeah, because if we think about how to get to a song, there's a 70% chance you would get to it from an ad, and there's a 60% chance you would get to it from a song. So it seems like this Markov chain is biased in some sense towards songs. There's more forces pushing you towards songs than pushing you towards advertisements. And that reflects the fact that in the long run, you're more likely to spend having an event at a song versus having an event at an advertisement. So now we're almost there. It seems like we've almost got the solution, but we just need to bring in the fact that songs and advertisements have different distributions. They are, in general, have different lengths. Now we can do a kind of hacky thing, which I admit doesn't seem inherently obvious, but we can do our best to motivate it which is just using the averages of these distributions and not needing to get into like integrating over the entire distribution and considering all these different possibilities. And basically what we're gonna do is say that the thing we're after, which is the probability that a station is playing an advertisement, so that's this symbol right here, is gonna be equal to the fraction of events that are advertisements, so this F sub A is this 36%, times the average length of an advertisement. Because if you think about just having a series of events, so you might have a advertisement and then you might have a song and then you might have another advertisement, you just think about all these series of events. The advertisements are gonna have different lengths each time because they're coming from a distribution, but on average, they're going to be two minutes long. The songs are also gonna have different lengths because they're coming from this distribution, but on average, they're gonna be three minutes long. And since what we care about is literally this overall general average behavior, we are safe here to just plug in the averages of our distributions and not need to care about anything that there were exponential distributions to begin with or iterating over the entire distribution and making this problem more complicated than it needs to be. So we're saying the probability a station would play an advertisement is the fraction of events that are ads times the average length of an ad divided by the fraction of events that are ads times the average length of an ad plus the fraction of events that are songs, which is the 64%, times the average length of a song. So the average length of an ad is two minutes, this is two minutes, this is three minutes, which is the average length of a song. 
And so if we work all that out, we get 0 0.276. And that is the probability that any station will be playing an advertisement if we tuned in at just a random point in time. Now we backtrack to the beginning of the problem. We plug that in right here. And what we're after is one minus that quantity squared, which is going to give us the probability that at least one station will be playing a song as 0.924 or a little bit over 92%. And now we can actually verify this. I wrote a simulation in Python to see if this makes any sense. And da 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 da, we worked with a simulation and we get basically this number, 0.924, very close to 0.924 as the probability. So I hope you enjoyed this problem. I enjoyed working through it. It's nice to solve these problems just to keep our fundamentals sharp. And it's also really cool to think through solutions to real world problems that use these structures that we're learning in our universities and courses and stuff like that. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Thank you for watching. Any comments are always welcome, of course, and I'll see you all next time.